Okay, we're here with Emma, who we are helping out with a chronic disc protrusion on L4, L5 on her right hand side. Now she's had this since 2019. She's been getting better, getting worse, getting better. She got to the point where she was pain free. She was doing triathlons, full Olympic triathlons. She was great. But with a chronic disc protrusion like that, sometimes they come and go and they can recur. Now this is obviously, hopefully we're gonna make it the last time this recurs for a long, long time and keep her out of the surgeon's office. At the moment, her symptoms are right-sided sort of buttock hip pain rather than back pain. So she's got an L45 disc that's herniated and protruded into the right-hand side canal and she's getting, getting stenosis. So this is a little bit different than an acute disc bulge because she can bend forward, show me the bending forward. She can bend forward, she can flex, keep her knees relatively straight. She's a little bit tight in the neural tension but she's okay, doesn't have any pain. She can also ride a bike for 20K, she's absolutely fine. What she has got trouble with is extension. So try the extension for me, show me where that pain comes on sort of there. Now she's getting that down into the hip. Occasionally it'll go down the leg, but it's mostly gone from the leg. So the side of the component that goes down the leg is mostly gone. It's just going straight into the buttock, which is that classic sort of L4-5 problem. Now the stenosis part is what we're going to have to deal with because normally if you've got a disc bulge bulging out, they don't like the flexion and they work better and better and better extension. She's getting blocked into extension. So when you go backwards for me again, go back, she sort of blocks up and it jams. It's that jamming feeling of here. Now for her, we have to get that extension better, okay? If she's gonna get rid of this problem, get rid of her pain, we have to get her extension better at that segment. And so what we're trying to do is improve all the range, get her strength better, get her pain down so she can slowly let the body sort out that disc over time. And hopefully that gets better and better and better. If her symptoms get better, she keeps exercising. When the you know symptoms gets less, then her exercise can ramp and she can go back into running. So she can swim, she can bike, she just can't run at the moment. We try to get her back to that. Keep, like I said, keep her out of the surgeon's office if we can at all costs. So let's have a look at what we're doing. Have a jump on your front, Emma. So with Emma, remember we, well, she doesn't like extension, okay? So if I have her flat on a bed, she doesn't like that too much. So we have to raise her up. Just come forward a little bit for me, Em. So I put a pillow in there to bring her out of extension and keep her lumbar spine in more of a neutral position. So when we mobilize her here, we're not getting as much jamming going on. We can actually get the joints moving, get her stretched out, get that whole segment moving, get her muscle stiffness less so she can extend and start improving. Because while the body's sorting out that disc protrusion naturally over time, that's the best case scenario, we have to keep her loose keep her pain free as much as we can, keep her strong. If she tightens up, if she gets weaker from the pain that is increasing, the whole thing crashes and gets worse. She can't exercise, she can't do stuff because she's got to buy her time. If she's not gonna get surgery for this, she needs to work on how do I maintain as painless po as possible and exercise as much as I can while that is happening. If you don't do anything and just give up, then what's gonna happen is your pain's gonna increase the pain is gonna make the muscles weak, it's gonna tighten it up, it's actually gonna exacerbate and amplify the symptoms. So it's really important that she gets treatment, really important that she gets her homework done, and really important that she exercises as much as she can within her boundaries. Okay, enough of that, let's look at what we're doing. If you try that extension for me, Emma, the interesting thing is, you know how she couldn't extend when she was standing? Now she can extend when she is lying down. The reason for that is she's unloaded, so she's not loading down on the disc like when you're standing, so it's unloaded here. Her range isn't still that great, so just try it again for me. Right? So when she comes up, that is an amazing extension she's got. We need more than that if she's gonna be able to run, so we're aiming to get a little bit more than that. Now, what we're gonna do is get on the right side because her disc protrusion is the right side. Her L5S1, just to note, has got a little bulge in there as well. Her major one is L4-5, her minor one is L5S1. So we actually loosen up that one as well. So if I go down on L5, what I'm gonna do is work on posterior anterior pressure like that. Now, sometimes she'll get a sort of shot of pain here or maybe a little bit like that. Initially, if she's stiff, and then once I loosen that up and get that moving, then it goes away. So we've tried and tested this one quite a lot with her and making sure, okay, well, if I make it sore, does it she actually get better? And she does. So I've got to be careful how much I load her up because we don't want her going home super sore and then not being able to do anything. Um, so we've got to try and get her extension at the level on the side of the problem 
as good as we can, as quick as we can, within our pain tolerances. Now, that's what we do to loosen up a little bit. Then the major one we're working on is mobilization with extension. So, Emma, you go into that extension for me. What I'm going to get her to do, drop down again for me, is go on that L4-5, load it down into a, sort of a posterior pressure into extension, and she then does extension. So I'm gliding that joint and getting that level moving as she extends. So I take away the jamming. All right. So we take a pressure off when she's down, pressure on when she comes up. So then at this point here, I'll take it off, load down, post and turn to extension, glide it as she extends. This is super effective. And it's the sort of thing she can't do when she's standing by herself. Go again for me, I'll go down to L5, and we'll do like sets of 10 of this, three or four sets of that if we can get it in. Mindful that I don't make her too sore, like pressure-wise, we don't want to bruise it too much or anything like that. We just got to get it moving. And this will help deactivate some of that muscle guarding that's going on because the better the movement of that joint, the less the brain will guard it, so the less stiffness she'll get. And then she'll find that when she goes back, when she's a little bit looser. So that one's really important to get her extension right. We retest that every sort of rep to make sure she is improving and she's not getting worse from the pressure. Um, and making very careful that we don't excite any of that sciatic nerve sort of messaging or pain going down it. We want to improve her, not make her worse. Now, the sciatic nerve is also an issue. Have a line on your back for me, Emma. The interesting thing about her swimming too, she, her cycling's fine because she's in flexion. Now, this, remember, this is a stenosis issue, not a generally a sort of a, a classic acute disc bulge. The stenosis issue, though, not like extension, so, but we've got to get the extension better. When she's swimming, she has a little bit of pain. It's, it's okay, she can swim, but it's because her hips drop in the water a little bit, so she's in a little bit of extension. So it'd be like lying on that bed without a pillow, and that's why. So the stronger her core gets, the more she can lift her hips out of the water when she is, well, not deep in the water when she's swimming, the better she'll get. And obviously when you're running, the loading and extension is not happening at the moment. So we're just banning her from running at the moment, but we'll get her back. So initially, about three weeks ago, her straight leg raise test for her neural tension was sitting about there. It was horrendous, okay? 10, 15, 20 degrees, okay? And that was giving her pain straight in her buttock. So we knew that there was an entrapment of the nerve when it went through into the lower back, okay? So that disc protrusion was pushing out enough that it was blocking that nerve. And so as soon as it, she wraps that nerve around it, bang, she gets the pain. Now, you tell me when that comes on. Starting there, okay. Now, she's a little bit aggravated today. We got her to the point, but I can get her through that. Is it going away yet? Yeah. It's gone away now. Interesting. So before, it would start like 20, comes on. I couldn't take any further. She'd get worse and worse and worse. Then we got to the point where, okay, it's getting sore. I had to stop there. Now the sauna starts there, but then it goes away, which is very interesting. So she does have the range. Now she's been working hard on this at home. I'll show you that exercise she's doing at home. But in the clinic, what we're gonna do is try and get that whole nerve moving. And I'm just gonna watch and make sure she doesn't bring that pain on. Is that okay? Yeah. So we're getting her to try and get full extension of the knee with some dorsiflexion. Now, she'll get some tightness through the back leg. You do this yourself, you go, oh yeah, I can feel the tightness through there. I'm just, just worried about the pain that's happening in the butt, the symptom, okay? So if she gets, oh, it's tight the back of the leg, tight the calf, that's fine. You don't want to go so far that you cause pins and needles, of course, but if she's got pain in the buttock, that's where I will stop. I'll stop just shy of bringing that pain on. So what you're trying to do is just improve the mobility of that neural system and try and desensitize it to that movement. Okay, so we've got to get the whole thing moving. Remember, she'll tighten up when she sits down or she doesn't exercise, so she has to do her exercises, but we're trying to spend more and more and more of the time during the day pain free, which just feels better, okay? Gives her hope, you know, makes her feel better, but also it stops her from stiffening up, okay? It stops her crashing, stops her getting weaker, and allows the body to just chip away at healing and getting this thing right. Um, and obviously, worst case scenario for some of these people, they have to go over surgery for things like disectomies to try and remove that part of the disc. We're gonna see if this time she can, it can happen naturally and she can maintain it. And of course, we're gonna see if we can keep her that way for as long as possible. And her homework is gonna maintain that, right? So she wants to do triathlons, she's gonna have to do a bit of homework to be able to maintain that.
You feel okay with that? Okay, so we work on two things, trying to get her extension better and try and work on getting her neural tissue moving because that will drop all that pain down then she can focus on her core work. Now, she's also got a whole bunch of exercises to do that try and mimic what we do in the clinic. So we'll have a look at that in part two.